Hello and welcome to my new video where we are going to have a quick rundown of my template that I've created for VFace texture pack here inside of Houdini for RenderMan. And before we start, in the download folders that you get from me, you will also find these two IDX files. And what I would like you to do is to control C them, so to copy them, because there are actually some UI changes to two of the RenderMan nodes. And let's go here to documents, go into your Houdini folder and then go for presets. If you don't have that folder, just create one and inside a VOP and control paste it in here. So let's go back here and then we can open here the fresh instance of Houdini, of course, otherwise they will not get picked up. Then we can open our project here. It's on my desktop project template 3D and here we go. So if you get such a warning, this is not a problem. It's probably just somewhere a parameter that is not named correctly. You can just press OK and when you saved it and open it the next time it doesn't pop up again. So what do we have here? So we just have a simple camera with dome light. We have the head geometry node and we have for the look dev assets a geometry node as well. And we are going to start populating here our scene. So we have here the chart and sphere read node. You can find these assets here inside of assets, chart, sphere, FBX. Let's bring it in here. And then we also want to have the ref plane. Let's bring it in here as well. And then we have them here. So we have just transform nodes and then they are getting split here by material. So we have chrome, gray, chart and the reference. And the materials for them, they are here. So next thing next, we also want to have a hat. And I bought a while ago the VFace Pack 144 in case you want to follow along with the same texture pack. And let's grab here the closed one. Let's jump in here for file and then let's grab here. And you can grab the closed or the open. Let's grab the closed, doesn't matter that much. And it will be too big. So let's scale it down 0.01 and then we have it here. So what I also like to do is to bring in a test geometry from Houdini that I can place everything on the correct on the correct point in the workspace. And why is this important? It's very important that we work in the correct scale because subsurface scattering and also displacement map has a direct impact on the scale of the scene. And I want to work as physically accurate as possible. So that's why I bring in here this reference. Then I can go in here and with the transform here, we can bring that guy up to where the head should be. I think that's just about fine. And then we can delete that one and we can place here our reference asset. So I think we are also going to scale that down a bit and then this reference as well. So let's scale it down as well. And then we want to bring that guy up to somewhat the head level and this one as well. So let's go and hide our head here and let's populate here also the textures we need. We jump in here so we can see we have the Lama Conductor, which is the Crow material. We have the gray material here, which is the gray ball. And then we have the color chart and the reference. So for the color chart, I'm only using a diffuse. Technically, you would have also some sort of a specular on top. But in my case, I found it works a bit more. It works a bit more accurate with just the diffuse. But it is this, this color. Um, squares on the chart. They are anyway very special coded, I guess, or very special made that they have barely specular anyways. So let's grab here the chart texture. This you can find here in the texture folder. Then here it's already pre-converted to TX files. And for the reference, I like to use here from the pack reference. And then I think it's calibrated. Yeah, this one. Because we want to match the gray to our scene that we are in the correct, um, yeah, w w that we have the correct lighting. Let's grab that in here as well. And then we, of course, want to have our ROP node. We can there change some settings. So let's go here for 512. The pixel variance can be 25, so it's a bit quicker. And under render limits, I want to get rid of four of my cores so that it's not going to interfere with my recording. 
So we can now look through the camera, lock it, select the head and space F and we have it centered here. So we can unlock it. Let's jump in here. And first, oh, of course, we also want to have the HDR light. I'm sorry. So let's go here to the dome light and let's go into our folder again. And then we can see here we have an HDR folder. So this is actually the, the, the HDR from that day where they were shooting this, this person, where they were doing the scan. We can grab it here and then we are ready to go for render almost. So what I know, we want to transform that by minus 90 degrees that we get the same. Oh, my bad, minus 90. That we get the same lighting angle like we have on our reference where it is more frontal lit. So let's jump into our IPR here. Let's grab my IPR, which I have here on the side and let's render and see what we got. Here we go. So let's jump in here and the reference plane, I want to move a bit on the side. So somewhat the same like our sphere here. And then we can already see that the reference gray is a bit more bluish compared to what we have in our scene. And that's why we are going in and do this calibration process or that we, that we, that we can kind of get the same lighting condition like we had on, on the reference. To do so, we can jump here to our light and then we can go to our color tab here and then we can reduce some of the, of the, of the colors here to match it a bit more. So as we see here, we have a bit uh, red tint. That means we are going in and reduce a bit of the red. Let's make that. That's a bit too blue now. So let's increase it again. Maybe something like that. Maybe we can go for 9.6. Then what I also see is we are a bit too bright. So let's reduce the brightness a bit. I think that's now a tiny bit too dark. I think we can go even higher. So 0.875 I think is just about nice. And I think we can live with that. So the color chart here is a bit less important because we can live with just the gray that is matched but when you want to calibrate, for example, a bunch of reference textures together with an HDR, together with an onset plate, there you really need this Macbeth chart where you then can use Nuke to color neutralize that based on these fields here, these little, little squares. But for our case, we can live with that. So let's stop here that, and then we can hide that, and then we can enable our head and then of course we want to assign the material let's go in here material then there should be already one matte skin except and let's jump to the material section so we can actually hide that and then we can make that a bit bigger so this is the shader you will get with that template and this is actually where all the magic happens so this is just a ray trace so we can move that away it looks huge but i tell you it's more easy to use as you might think when we have a look here, we have all the texture read nodes that are coming also in the V-Face pack, except the displacement from ZBrush. This is already pre-hooked up, so in case when you do your project where you then also want to add your high poly details that you sculpted in ZBrush and you want to bring it in as a displacement map. So if you don't have that, you can just simply disconnect it or you can change the default color for the missing texture to black, but I think just disconnected will work just fine. So of course they are now empty. That means we need to populate them with the corresponding textures. So let's go in here. We have the maps and I have downsized the albedo and the displacement map to 8K so that renderman doesn't have a hard time with dealing with 16K textures. So that just said. So we have here selected a utility that of course means we want to have the utility map. Let's go to albedo. Let's grab the albedo 8K in that case. See this we don't have. Then of course next is displacement. Let's grab the displacement. And then we have the IDs. The IDs you can find here in the ID folder. So it's here. Then we can see we have IDs for the specific areas on our head. And I really highly recommend when you do a project also transfer this maps, not only the albedo and the displacement utility, also transfer these maps because they're coming for free and then the whole template works 
out of the box, really. This is super cool. So let's grab here the first ID and then let's grab the second ID. That's this one. And the third, let's grab that guy as well here. And the last but not least, number four. So in your case, you want to generate the TX files, of course. In my case, they are already processed because of course I've tested it before. And then we can hit render button and then we should get the V phase. So let's give it here a quick moment to load everything into the RAM and then we will see what we get. And then of course we are going to make a quick rundown here on the shader. Here we go, look at that, we get a phase. And this is actually the beauty of this whole template. So we have a nice baseline settings. The only thing we have to do is we need to populate it with the textures to pass it to the correct, to the correct point. And then we can start dialing in from there based on our reference. So as we can see here now, we get our head. I think what we also can do is we can enable here our background. Let's go here to the lights. Then we can go here to render, pyramid attributes, camera visibility, and then we get it on the background. Let's go back to material. So we have here a whole bunch of displacement nodes. What they're actually doing is we have here just a simple pixel transform which is set to centered because our displacement map has a midpoint of 0.5, what means it's a centered value. And I've reduced it to 0.5 here as well. That gives us a headroom that we can play around with. For example, increase that is pushing out more as it pushes inwards or the inverse of it. Here we have a simple addition operation that is going on. We just add together this displacement maps. And as we can see here, the node UI of our properties looks different. It looks so much more organized where we can also rename the different inputs and we can see everything in one go. So here a little shout out at my, to my lead at Dineg, which came up with this whole UI change for the node. And I swear by God, since then I cannot live anymore without. It's so handy. So as I said, we have here just a simple addition and this then will get masked out by the different ID areas. So we have a look here, we have the forehead, we have the nose, cheek and all the different areas. All the basic or all the base numbers here, the base values, they're the same on every node. So this gives us just a starting point where we can say, okay, this is not too bad, but we can now start tweaking the different areas, the different zones based on our reference where we probably say, on the forehead, we want to reduce a bit the red channel, but we want to have a bit of stronger blue channel, whatever. We can do that to match our reference. So actually, it's pretty easy. You never have to deal with those. It's really just you do the tweaking in here, and then the rest here is really just over with the mask input, and then it goes here or added together again, and then here the displacement from ZBrush, and then it goes here into the output. So then here you can tweak as much as you want, really this is then up to you. So I'm not going to cover too much what is happening here inside of those nodes, so I can make a separate tutorial about values and how they work here in the dielectric and the subsurface scattering if you want that, but I don't want to stretch here this little rundown of the template for too long. So here we have the subsurface color stream, and here we have already pre-hooked up a color correct for the base. Then with the utility mask, we also have the melanin and the hemoglobin and the cavity where we can do some changes to our albedo. So here we also see the second node we have copied over in terms of the layout change. We can again name it with a label, which is super, super handy. And then we also have everything in one go, which we will see later here, which comes in very, very handy. So they're per default disabled. So if you want to have them enabled, then you can just enable them and tweak the hemoglobin and melanin color values there based on your needs. So this is very straightforward. If you want to do more changes, you can add here in more as you want, but this is just the baseline here. All right, so now let's have a look on this pink notes here. They are actually the different zones of the face, also based on the IDs for the subsurface scattering scale. So when we look, they are just simple um, pixel layered blend nodes where I just plugged in the ID masks again from our IDs. So it's kind of like the same principle like here. We have them split based on the IDs. 
And then when we have a look here, we have again all the different zones. We have neck back, neck front, ears, lips, eyes, cheeks, whatever, and so on. It's just daisy chain that continues here. As you notice here, we have a green color, what means we are taking advantage of the red and the green channel. What I mean with that is we have this very nice maps in the utility texture from Reface for the melanin and the hemoglobin. So we can now change independently of each other the subsurface scattering scale of that. So in the red channel, we have the melanin. We can say, for example, everywhere where the lips are or where the eyes are, the melanin parts, they have a penetration depth of, let's say maybe there it's a bit more. So we go here for 0 0.2, while on the uh, hemoglobin, we want to have even more penetration, so we can go there a bit higher. So let's say on the lips, we also want to have a bit of a higher value. Probably um, in the hemoglobin a tiny bit less, but in the melanin a bit more. So this is really just, I, I came up random with that. I really high, highly encourage you to do this testing a bit on yourself. I just want to teach you here the, the idea of the template. So here it's kind of like just getting split out. So here we have the red channel, the green channel. We create a float three to them that we then can merge them again, based together, based on this hemoglobin and melanin texture we get in the utility map. And then this will be then merged together and goes into the subsurface scattering skill. So we have the same principle here for the roughness, but it's just single channel. We just have the red channel that we're taking use of. So we have again, same principle like here, we have the different different areas where we then can set a roughness value for that. So for example, on the eyes, usually it's a bit more glossy, so we can go here a bit more glossier. On the lips, for example, there we can go even glossier because they're a bit wet. So then you can go through the list here. We also have the cavity here, which is pretty cool. With the cavity, we can make that everything that is the pores that are going inwards, they're a bit more rougher, so therefore they're a bit less glossy. So this gives us then later a nice contrast in the specularity. And then this is just going into our Lama dielectric here, which is our first specular. And then we have the second specular, which is a slightly different IUR as a starting point, and it is a bit more glossy. So last but not least, we have here the mask for the clear coat here for the last specular where I'm taking use of the red utility, which I grade a bit, and we have the cavity. You can change how much you want to reduce the glossiness of that here in this value here in this, this layer for the cavity, how much you want to get rid of the specularity kind of inside um, the pores. And this is basically it. This is basically already the whole template. So it's pretty straightforward, I guess. So you import here your textures. Then you have the displacement you can tweak based on the areas. Then you have here the cavity, hemoglobin and melanin, which you also can tweak based on your needs. So we can quickly have a look if you want. So we need for that a float three. So I hope actually Render Man will introduce a better way to view nodes, to be honest. So we want to create a pixel constant. I know there is one in Solaris, which honestly speaking, not works pretty well, sorry. But it would be nice to have something like that also in native Houdini. And yeah, if it would work a bit nicer, that would be pretty nice. So let's bring it in here. And now let's hook up, for example, the melanin. And now we can see here, this is everything that is the melanin within the skin. We can change that, we can tweak that more to to a value we like. This is up to you, probably also depends a bit on your project. So this is just a starting point. And uh, let's have a look here, the hemoglobin as well. This is already a bit cranked up. So there you can play around as you want. And then here we also have the cavity, which is also inverted that we can use it as a mask. You can also play around with those values if you want. So yeah, as I said, this is basically already the whole template, which you will get for free, of course. So. I hope uh, you like this starting point and I really hope you enjoy using it. If you have any suggestion how you could improve it, feel free to let me know in the comments or share your template version if you if you think you, you have overworked it in a better way, whatever. So yeah, I wish you happy rendering and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye.